Atari is of course a name that is synonymous with video games and for a lot of original gamers the Atari VCS 2600 was their introduction into the world of gaming and to this day the brand is still iconic and connected to those early days. Now the original Atari left the console market after the release of the Atari Jaguar in 1993 when the company was liquidated in 1998 and since then their IP has been passed from company to company over the last couple of decades. But in the summer of 2017, a new console was announced using the name initially of Atari Box, shortly renamed to Atari VCS, with a very similar styling to the classic 1977 Atari system. But instead of the many re-releases and clone systems of the classic Atari, this is a new micro console that's designed to play modern games and was launched on the crowdfunding website Indiegogo. Now, it is fair to say that it's had a bit of a troubled development path and the team have made several blunders along the way, which has attracted some bad press and skeptics over the last few years. And there were delays due to development taking longer than expected and a global pandemic, I imagine, didn't help things either. They even hired former Xbox system architect Rob Wyatt in June of 2018, only for him to quit very publicly in late 2019, claiming that he hadn't been paid for six months. They also had a spat with British technology website The Register, who ran a series of scathing articles, even questioning the legitimacy of the project. And I just want to give a big shout out to Paul Keward, who is one of my viewers, a very generous viewer, in fact, because he was one of the backers of the Atari VCS on Indiegogo, this exact one here, actually, that he got in December of last year, found that he wasn't using it very much and instead decided to donate it to my channel so I could do this video. So thank you very much, Paul. Massively appreciated. And as happy as I am to get my hands on this, I must admit the fact that Paul got bored of it only a few weeks after receiving it does fill me with a bit of skepticism, if I'm honest. But in this video, we're going to get the machine set up and uh, not only check out what it's like for modern gaming, what comes with it, but also, because I love the form factor of this, is it going to make the ultimate retro emulation system? We'll dive into all that next. Now, just quickly before we hop into that, I wanted to take a really quick moment to give a huge thank you to this video sponsor, my amazing friends at Brilliant. Now, Brilliant is so good. It lets you see maths and science in a completely new way. And if you're someone like me, who tends to learn in a very visual way, you'll find this just perfect. They help you see concepts visually and interact with them as well, and then post questions that really get you thinking. And I love how their courses are laid out like a story, so you can do them in small digestible parts to fit around your schedule. And then there are no grades, just pick a course that you're interested in. If you get it wrong, that is no problem. They'll explain why in a useful explanation, so then you can learn from it for next time. Now, of course, if you watch my channel, you love technology and computers. And I found Brilliant's courses on computer science fundamentals and algorithms fascinating. And you can even learn languages like Python and even AI and neural networks. And Brilliant is great for all the family. Their course library is perfect for ages from 10 to 110. Whatever your experience from beginner to advanced, they will take you on a guided tour where you'll learn to think and become a better problem solver and enjoy new challenges every week. So why don't you jump in right now and get started? In fact, I've got you an incredible deal. So if you're quick and one of the first 200 people to sign up with my link, which is brilliant.org slash Dan Wood, you will get 20% off your annual subscription. And of course, support the channel by supporting our sponsors and a big thank you to Brilliant. So the Atari VCS is an AMD Ryzen based machine with an embedded R1606G CPU with either four or eight gigabytes of upgradable RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal flash storage, and apparently it runs on a custom Linux based operating system. And the console is currently on sale for $399 on their website, although I have read there is going to be a lower cost 4 gigabyte version that only supports 1080p when it goes on general release that will retail for $249.99. So depending on the model you choose, there are cheaper SKUs. I couldn't find any UK pricing though, unfortunately, at the time of recording this video. Now, Paul was generous enough to give me the 800 Onyx version, the 8 gigabyte model that supports 4K video. And you can buy two different controllers for it. Now, there is a classic joystick that resembles the original Atari stick that retails for $59.99, 
or the one that I've got here, which is a more modern style gamepad that's made by a third party company called Power A. Now you do have to buy these separately or together in a bundle. I don't think this is gonna be included in the basic packs. Now, obviously this has already been unboxed by Paul, but he has packed everything back into the boxes. So even though it's not an authentic unboxing experience, it is, you know, a, a very lightly used system, but we can at least see what's in here. So we open it up by um, just sliding out the side of it here, out of this sleeve. And then, it kind of reminds me a bit of a shoebox, <laughs> but we have, you know, some great design on here as well with, you know, the, uh, the asteroid spaceship there, you know, smashing the asteroids, the Atari VCS logo on the front there as well. Again, very minimalistic, which, you know, I do like the design and everything in the packaging. And then inside, we have a foam insert to protect the console. And the first thing you see is the Atari VCS itself. And uh, we just remove it here. As you can see, there's actually a useful little place to put your finger in. And then you should just be able to lift the console out. There we go. And yeah, it does actually feel quite nice. There is a bit more weight to it than you might imagine. And yeah, it doesn't feel like cheap and plasticky. It has got quite a quality feel to this, I've got to say. So we'll have a look at the console in a bit more detail in a moment. Also in the box, we have this um, little compartment underneath here that just houses the, uh, the power supply. And um, that's about all we have in the box. And while we're in an unboxing mood, I thought we'd have a quick look at the controller as well that again comes in its own packaging because um, you can buy these separately. Um, as you can see here, this is the wireless modern controller. They do the uh, old school joystick version too. Bluetooth, wireless rechargeable for PC and mobile gaming, featuring rumble and LED light effects, compatible with most PC and Android systems, which is quite interesting. It's not actually locked to the Atari VCS. You can actually use this with um, any PC to um, play Steam games or anything like that. So um, if you want a controller just for other devices, this will work on those too. Around the side there, not much on that side. A little picture of the controller there, which I'll, uh, I'll get out and show you in more detail in a moment. As you can see there, their partnership with Power A, which is the company that makes this. And then we just have the, uh, yeah, the Fuji Atari logo on the side there. So again, we just take off the, the sleeve here. And yeah, packaging is very similar to the console, you know, with the, the asteroids ship there. And then yeah, we just open this cardboard box here. You should get a little quick start guide on the front there. Uh, again, you've got this foam here to protect it. And then the controller in here, yeah, nothing else. And the feel of it is actually quite nice. Um, it's rechargeable, so you haven't got like a, a battery compartment. By the looks of it, there's a built-in battery. Um, the layout of it, obviously, <laughs> heavily inspired by the Xbox, by the looks of it, you know, the, uh, the placement of the analog sticks and the, um, the action button in the center there. Uh, the menu button and also the uh you know even, even the fire buttons and everything they're all very similar uh <laughs> the d-pad yeah it's not too bad actually i do prefer you know a, an actual d-pad with directions rather than just having a disc but um it actually does feel a bit com more comfortable than it looks actually in in use the analog sticks nice responsive feel feel very similar to an xbox control sticks there same with the buttons very much like a it does feel a bit like a, a third party Xbox One controller, if I'm honest. On it lights up, there you go, so I'm charging it already. Which is quite quite surprising considering this has been in the box for about five months now. So uh, yeah, not a bad little controller. Um, yeah, you've got your shoulder buttons and your triggers at the back there as well. Again, feels very similar to uh, an Xbox One controller. Um, not much innovation there, but you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the more I look at this console, the more I really like its appearance. I mean, it is essentially a mini PC that looks like an Atari 2600. What is not to like about having that on your desk? Although, now that I've unboxed it, there is one thing I've already found that I dislike about this, and that is on the front here, yet we have shiny plastic. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you touch it, and it is a fingerprint magnet. Now, I've always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with shiny consoles and the PlayStation 3 was the same as well. That first day you unbox it and clean it and put it on your shelf, it looks really good. Then a couple of days later, normally covered in dust, dog hair, fingerprints every time you touch it. So I generally prefer matte plastic on consoles as opposed to the uh, shiny surfaces, but you know, that's just individual taste. And then on the top of the console here, we have um, some grills that I think are actually just for 
appearance. It doesn't appear to be um, any holes in there for cooling. On the side of it, yep, nothing there either. Um, on the bottom, we just have, um, yeah, serial information. And then on the back is where the main business happens on the Atari VCS. And in terms of I.O. ports, I mean, it's very minimalistic. Again, you know, it is a, a micro PC in a fancy case, really. So we've got a couple more USB 3 ports on the back there, an HDMI connector, gigabit Ethernet, uh, the AC adapter plugs in there, and we have a power button that yeah, just stays in place. It doesn't pop in or out. Um, a couple of vents here for cooling on the sides. And that is about it. Very minimalistic. But in terms of, you know, aesthetics, I do really like the way it looks. It's compact, it's tidy, it looks great on your desk. But obviously the main question is, how well does it play games? So we'll get it set up, get it installed. And obviously to do that, we are gonna need the AC adapter, which is here. Again, it looks just like a kind of off the shelf one. I'm not sure whether there's any uh, branding on here. Um, yeah, it's not branded up by Atari. It looks like it's just uh, a standard, um, off the shelf one that's probably made in China. Um, the plug on it, you might be wondering about this. Paul did tell me that th this arrived without a plug on the end, and that is actually quite rare because I think everything you buy in the UK has come with a molded plug on it since um, around 1991, 1992, they made that law, but obviously with this being made abroad, maybe that rule doesn't apply, but he had to find an old plug, <laughs> hence this one that probably dates back from the, the 80s or 90s to put on here. So uh, yeah, it doesn't come like this out of the box. Although it does add to the retro charm. So everything unboxed and set up and time to go. Now I've got to say the system install process was actually quite a headache. On the first power on, you get this really cool animation and logo. Again, following on from the box design, it's got that really cool asteroids theme. And the first thing it will do is attempt to pair with the controller over Bluetooth. And then we get this instruction screen that basically tells you what all the buttons on the controller do. But the thing is, if you've ever used an Xbox controller, you already know how to use this. Even the fire button layout is identical to the Xbox. If you've played a video game in the last 20 years, chances are you probably won't need this tutorial. And then we need to set our language and connect to our Wi-Fi network, which you know, again, all very standard. And then the system will check for updates. So nothing out of the ordinary so far. And you know, I'm all for system updates. In 2021, having regular updates is a good thing. They can add new features, patch bugs and security issues. And the first one didn't take very long at all, actually, around 15 minutes. And then the system rebooted and we went through the controller pairing screen and the tutorial again. The language and Wi-Fi screens came up again, but we could actually just skip through those. And then it checked for another update. And this time it found a system BIOS update. So another reboot later and it flashes the system's BIOS to the newest version. And we get this big red warning not to power off the machine, as I imagine if you do, probably like most PCs, you've got a chance that you could actually brick the system. And after a third reboot, again, we get the controller pairing and the tutorial screens I skipped past. And at this stage, I got a black screen. Now, having just done a BIOS update, I must admit I was very nervous about doing a hard reboot here, just in case it was still working on something in the background. And it was after one o'clock in the morning at this stage, and I had to be up for work in six hours. So I decided that I would leave the Atari powered on overnight and then return to it the next day. And then when I finished work and got back at 6 p.m. the next evening and turned on my monitor, we were back on the controller setup screen. So I'm not sure how long it stayed on that black screen, but I probably gave it around 15 minutes before I went to bed. So then we go through the controller language and Wi-Fi screens again, it checks for updates, and <laughs> to my surprise, it actually found another one. Now, I'm not sure how often they update this system, you know, if they're doing daily updates, then fair enough, but you know, it did seem quite unlucky to get three separate updates in the space of around 15 hours. So I waited 15 minutes again, another reboot, again, went through the controller pairing and tutorial screens, language and Wi-Fi. I'm getting very well versed in skipping these now. But luckily, this time, we got to the account setup stage. Now, you can sign in as a guest, it appears, but I thought I would make a proper account, as obviously I want to use the store and check out some of the software. So we've got this uh, really big EULA that obviously I read in depth. After that, we can pick an avatar, and there is a really nice selection of avatars you can choose from here, including classic Atari machines like the Atari 800, the ST, and the Atari Jaguar in here as well, which, you know, I had to pick the Atari Jaguar one. 
After that, you pick an account name, put your email in, and again, all very common steps. And it is just as much of a pain to do this on a controller as it is on an Xbox or a PlayStation. But at this stage, I was trying to get that out of box experience, so I hadn't plugged in a mouse or a keyboard yet. And then after you've verified your account on email, we're ready to see the Atari VCS dashboard for the first time. And my initial impression was, as slick as it looked, is that it? Now, don't get me wrong, the design does look really nice, but the lack of content doesn't exactly wow on first impression. Now, we've only got a few things pre-installed. We've got the Atari Vault, which is a collection of old school Atari 2600 games. We've got the Chrome web browser there as well, and the mobile companion app setup. And that is it. Now, I've got to be honest, even the Ouya gave a better first impression than this. But despite what they say, first impressions aren't everything. So I thought I'd check out the Atari VCS Vault, and again, it does look really slick. We've got some really nice introduction animations, and the user interface does give you these really nice scrollable 3D arcade machines, which you know are very nice. And there is a great selection of classic Atari titles here, and plenty of the big famous names that we all know, including titles like Missile Command, Asteroids, Tempest, and of course Pong. Although curiously, no ET. And when you select one of the arcade cabinets, they also give you a very nice gallery section. And from here, you can check out old adverts from when these machines were released and images taken from back in the day, which is actually a really nice touch and gives you a nice historical context of the game. And the games themselves look decent enough, you know, as decent as a 40 year old game is going to look on a modern TV. But playing the games wasn't quite the experience that you get in the arcade. Now, I am actually pretty decent at Pong, believe it or not, usually playing it in places like Arcade Club. But controlling a game designed for a paddle with an analog stick on the controller was actually quite tricky. And I got my ass handed to me by the CPU several times. I knew where I wanted to be on the screen, but getting there was quite tricky. I know, blaming the tools. But I found it was the same with Tempest as well. You know, these arcade games were made to be used with rotary spinner controls. They were designed for that. So trying to control them with a modern controller and the analog stick, I found quite hit and miss. Generally more miss for me. But you know, I guess that's probably something you get better at with, you know, practice and time. And speaking of controls, some games like Asteroids Deluxe here only work with the D-pad and not the analog controllers, which I find quite odd. Because I actually think controlling Asteroids would be a bit easier with the analog stick than the D-pad, but they don't actually do anything here. And these games are presented well. You know, they've got nice scanline filters on the graphics, but these are games that pretty much everybody has access to already. It really isn't a compelling reason to go out and spend $399 on a new console, but it is a nice inclusion. And launching Chrome from the dashboard brings up the Atari VCS homepage. And then, well, using the console itself, you can't actually do anything. There's no on-screen cursor that you can move with the controller, and I couldn't see any way to bring up an on-screen keyboard. Uh, I mean, admittedly, that's not a really pleasant way to surf the web, but it is nice to have the option if you just want to jump on and do something quickly. As it stands, you can't actually use it at all out the box without either adding your own mouse and keyboard or opening the companion app on your phone. And the bit I was most anticipating here was the game store. As it comes with so little software out the box, I was keen to buy a few games and download a few apps and make this a more fun experience. But landing in the store was another big disappointment, I'm afraid. Now, I get that this system is currently only out to backers, but their general release is slated for spring 2021. And looking at the Atari Age forums, people on there have been in touch and asked them, and the general consensus seems to be that they're planning on getting this out to market in the next three to six weeks, hopefully. Now, we've had a global pandemic and, you know, there's chip shortages, so whether that will happen, I don't know. But as it stands, I presume this is almost ready for release. But at the time of recording this video, mid-May 2021, there is hardly anything in here. Now, there are more of the Atari Vault collections in here, again, containing old 70s and 80s Atari titles, which I guess is cool if you don't own those on any other system already. 
and you could install AntStream, the streaming retro gaming service. Again, very cool, but native games on here are very thin on the ground. Now, at the time I'm recording this video, there are only about like 20 actual games in the store, and most of them look like indie clones of retro titles, like, you know, Missile Command Recharged, um, Boulder Dash Deluxe. Again, even the Ouya had more to offer in terms of indie games than this. And there are also a bunch of apps here as well for you to do the usual streaming services, including Disney Plus, which is a nice addition, bearing in mind that not a lot of smart TVs seem to have that included, and, you know, my missus spends all day on that. And the only game that I actually recognised from the list here is Degeneration, which is a 30-year-old title that I used to play on my Amiga back in the day, but, you know, for £10, it's a fun game, and I did want to buy something and check out the purchasing process, so... At this stage, I plugged in a USB keyboard as filling in these forms with a controller doesn't look much fun. And I was a bit disappointed with the lack of payment options as well. I generally always try to use PayPal on services these days because it means that you don't have to change your details and everything when your card expires and you get a new one. And frankly, I've used too many services over the years that have been breached and had my card details leaked all over the internet. So really, I prefer to use PayPal if I can, but the only option here is filling in your credit card details. And after I'd done that, Degeneration downloaded in seconds, you know, again, it's quite an old game, and it plays as great as it ever has. It was really nice to control on the Atari controller, a very nice experience, no complaints about it. And another service you can install is AntStream. Now, if you haven't tried that before, it's actually really good. It is kind of like the Netflix of retro gaming. And when you open the app on here, they send you to antstream.com slash Atari to register. So they do have some association going on there. And you can choose either a free ad-supported model or you can pay $39.99 for a one-year subscription. But logging into my account on the Atari showed a big UI inconsistency. I couldn't type my login details in using my attached keyboard or using a mouse with the on-screen keyboard. And actually, that looked totally different to the last time the on-screen keyboard appeared. So I had to fill this in the cumbersome way using the controller. Now, maybe I could have used a companion app on my phone, but I didn't try that at the time. And frustratingly, this limitation doesn't end there. I found this also applies to the YouTube app and even things like Disney Plus. They're not controllable from the controller. You have to use a mouse and keyboard or the companion app on your phone, which makes the living room media box experience very awkward. And you know, for services like this, like Netflix, it appears that the app is actually just a link to open the Netflix website in Chrome. And Anstream itself has a really nice selection of retro classics that are all available by selecting them with the controller. Thankfully, that does work here. And the user interface, surprisingly, is a bit laggy. And I'm not sure whether that's the fault of the hardware or Anstream itself. And a lot of the games I tried on here work really well with the Atari controller. And you'll be pleased to know that a lot of the games on here let you play with a keyboard as well, which was quite good for me because that's the way I'm used to playing pinball fantasies with the shift keys, and it lets you do that here. And of course, text adventure games. There are lots of them on Anstream, and playing those with an on-screen keyboard quite frankly sounds horrendous, but luckily you can use your USB keyboard to play them. But this video isn't a review of AntStream, and neither is it a system seller because you can download the AntStream client for your PC, your Mac, your phone, and play the exact games there. But admittedly, the Atari VCS is a nice little box for it, and they do play well with its controller. And PC mode is another much talked about feature of the Atari VCS. This is where you can install a full PC operating system like Windows or Linux and turn the machine into a full PC. And there is space inside the machine to add a second M2 SSD. So you could install one of those and then put Windows on there for a tidier way of doing it. But I've just installed it on an external USB 3 drive. Now, admittedly, it was a bit of a headache getting it on there. There are instructions online, but it isn't quite as straightforward as you might imagine. And when you've got Windows installed, it behaves, well, as you'd imagine, like a PC. So, I mean, yeah, you can use it for writing documents or spreadsheets for work. You know, I installed Office 365 on here just for the novelty and, you know, the weirdness of having that running on a console. You can surf the web. But for gaming, it's actually not all that impressive. Now, I'm not much of a benchmarker. I find them very dull. But for those that care, this is the Geekbench score that you'll see on screen now. 
And as I mentioned earlier, you can upgrade this system with bigger storage. You can put more RAM in there, up to 32 gigabytes. But the big downside is the embedded Vega 3 graphics. You can't upgrade those. So that means you're stuck with this performance, which for modern games, isn't up to much. In fact, several games I tried complained that this system didn't meet the minimum standard requirements to even play the game. Now, it does handle emulation very comfortably. I installed Amiga Forever and C64 Forever, and playing these old school games with the Atari controller was actually a very pleasant experience. It was smooth and responsive, and I've got no complaints, and I install Steam on here as well, and you know, a lot of the not too demanding games actually ran perfectly well on here as well. But I do find that in PC mode, there is one thing that's quite distracting, and that is the constant spinning up and down of the internal fans. Pretty much every time you launch a program or do something even slightly taxing, the system fans start to roar for a second and then quickly spin back down. I actually think I would prefer it if the fan was just on higher settings constantly, to be honest. When I had this system set on my desk and I was trying to type this script, I actually ended up shutting the machine down as the constant spinning up and down of the fans was so annoying. And the games I'm showing here are all running fine, but they're not too taxing. And I've actually got an Intel Nook in my living room connected to my TV that can play these games fine. And really, the more I think about it, the Atari VCS reminds me of the Nook. It is a system on a chip PC that can do entry level gaming. And there are people that have got, you know, games like Cyberpunk running on here at the lowest settings with low detail at 720p. But fact is, it's not going to be a monster gaming rig in 2021. Now, Atari do claim that this model, the 800, is 4K capable, so I thought I'd take it into my living room and hook it up to my 4K TV and check out some Ultra HD content. Now, I didn't do extensive testing here, but I did check out a few 4K videos on Netflix and stream some 4K movie trailers on YouTube and this 4K royalty-free footage that you're watching right now. And despite the fans going into overdrive on the console quite regularly, it actually handled it pretty well. The odd drop frame here and there, but it was definitely watchable. And while I was here, I also took the opportunity to test out the Mobile Companion app, which is really just a remote control on your phone. And it did work well enough navigating the main menus. I found it a bit fiddly in Google Chrome, especially in the Ultra HD mode, but many times, unless you've got a keyboard and mouse plugged in, it is your only option for many of the media apps on here. So really after using the new Atari VCS for a week now, I've got quite a mixed opinion about it. And to be honest, my impressions of it are actually what I expected before I got it. In many ways, currently it is a bit underwhelming, but you know, for me, I love seeing a classic brand like Atari back on the shelves, even though this is obviously not the same Atari that we loved back in the day. And whenever a project is completed, you know, we've got a team who've put their heart and soul into this project for many years now. I really want it to succeed, but really this does feel like, you know what it is, an ultra compact PC in a nice case. And I've got to say, it is a very nice case. It is gorgeous. And in fact, I'm actually thinking of using this as maybe a PC for office jobs and internet surfing and maybe a bit of audio editing or a home theater PC just because of how incredibly cool it looks. You know, it is quite a novelty. And again, we do have to bear in mind that this console isn't officially released to the public yet. It is still only available for backers at the time of recording this video. But obviously, if they're aiming for that spring 2021 release, that would mean that it is imminent any week now. And hopefully they've been working behind the scenes and maybe working on getting some of these problems solved in the next month or two. But as it stands right now, there is a real lack of software on the Atari store and its gaming performance puts it around two generations behind the current consoles. And I think the lack of customized apps and the fact that it relies so heavily on a keyboard and mouse, despite it not coming with one or the accompanying mobile app is a problem. It would be nice to see actual apps written for this system where you can use a controller and they feel like a native experience. 
But that said, it is early days. If they manage to get some decent ports on here, maybe get involved more in the retro community, it would be great to see stuff like an official retro arch and a May map in the store, because it is very easy to load your own ROMs onto this system. And maybe the indie gaming scene could embrace it a bit more as well. And I think if the price was lower, maybe around 199 to 150 pounds, which I know it is expensive doing custom hardware, but maybe that'll happen one day. This would make a really nice little emulation box to house all of your old school emulators on. I mean, it's definitely got the look. So in conclusion, I'm a bit torn on this system. I do think it's got a lot of potential and it does feel like a very complete package. They've done an incredible job with the case, the packaging, the presentation is top notch and it really does feel like a lot of work and attention has got into this. Really, it boils down to the fact that it needs more software at the end of the day and hopefully, if more of these are made, they can eventually get that price down over time. But I do wanna say hats off to the team at Atari for their work on this project. I'm really excited to see where it goes next and hopefully I can do a follow-up video at some point in the future. And just a quick heads up that I actually do a weekly retro gaming podcast every single Friday where we bring you an industry veteran on the show and update you with everything that's been happening in the world of retro gaming and technology over the last seven days. Get it from your favorite podcast client or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on YouTube, here are another couple of videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.